All right, reacting to uh, Inside Star Citizen, like the moment it came up, it's it came out 51 seconds ago. So here we go. Uh, Inside Star Citizen expanding branding. If this is the new schedule for Inside Star Citizen, I am very happy. Okay, this is cool. Now, once again, they are <laughs> they are um, making a YouTube video on um, two sentences of the monthly report. So we'll see how this goes. One of the major mandates of our evergreen programming is to highlight and explore the works of as many teams. Can I don't think Jared knows. I, I just my my definition of evergreen is entirely different. Contributing to the creation of our universe is possible. And on this continuing road to Alpha 323, 4.0 and beyond, we periodically detour onto the proverbial side streets, if you would, and dedicate some time to those aspects you might not discover following the development of any other game. So on this week's show, I'm proud to highlight a team because nobody wants to discover about branding in a video game. Dedicated to bringing a creative nobody, flourish, most people. visual consistency, and contextual meaning to the various companies, factions, and societies of the persistent universe, the branding team from CIG Montreal. Hell yeah, let's go. All right, um, where to start? <laughs> I joined the team in January, about two years ago it was. What I was coming in from an experience at another company where I'd set up the first branding team for a video game, which was a really inter interesting experience. So when I heard about the, uh, the opportunity to do it for Star Citizen and build a branding team for a project like that was something that is, you know, you don't want to pass up on when I stepped into it. I just want to be clear that the um, the idea of like having these in-game brands and it feeling uh, like real is obviously really important and really cool. It's just funny that we go from one ISC like last week to this one. That's all I'm really the first first few months doing. About. You know, a bit of a due diligence, looking at the state of um, what we have in the game already in terms of branding, logos, the different manufacturers and all the brands, the factions. Ten years worth of material being put into the game, often being done by, you know, different artists or different parties and for different reasons also, you know. There was just a, a, a wide variety of styles. There would be a lot of like different interpretations for a single brand. And that was something that I noticed right away and I wanted to tackle as soon as I joined the team is to try and bring some a unifying vision, a bit more consistency to, you know, just help support the Star Citizen narrative, also to augment greatly uh, in terms of immersion. And that was something that I noticed right away and I wanted to tackle. You, you could see, uh, I'm sure we will get a, a much bigger picture of this, but that's the Kovalex distribution center right there. So, right. Um, obviously, that's a big part. Like, this stuff is the stuff that most people probably don't care about this stuff is the stuff that makes you feel like you're in a real immersive video game right it was something that i noticed right away and i wanted to tackle as soon as i joined the team Imagine if we actually painted our skins. Imagine if they took that animation and we painted skins on our weapons. Instead of in-game branding is not only items. about defining like creating logos and nice posters and cute little signs. We get involved with character design, the ships, you know, creating the manufacturers for the ships. We touch marketing, we touch web. It's just such a wide range of different applications and topics that we that we go through i think it's uh it's as important as any other parts of the uh, of the game it creates a brand cohesion and a really good uh immersion for the player if yes. it comes to yeah obviously like brands and logos you know if it's a ship you know make it look real professional like it's a you know like in real life like a fancy car company or something like that you know 
Well, branding Origin is uh, branding. an important part of the uh, the environment development. You know, developing the locations, I think it, it helps a lot with the immersion. One of the things that we've tackled uh, recently is some navigational signage for the, for the landing zone. So, you know, putting up maps, putting up signage, different assets that we add to the game to help the player understand his environment, understand the gameplay, understand the locations, the story, the narrative. I, this is just a complete 180. It's so funny. If it adds a visual component to the narrative uh, to create a more impactful story. So you have uh, the brand, like the, the narrative that people know, but then with the visuals, we can add an extra layer to it. In Star Citizen, especially for the manufacturers, you know, everything revolves around ships wow. and the manufacturers are very important in their core to uh, the gameplay and the identity of the game. And I noticed that, you know, a lot of these very important brands didn't have that unifying vision that we were looking for. So Mirai was a new brand that we created, which was um, basically a performance division of, of MISC. So when you look at Mirai, we start off with uh, brand and positioning, um, the brand bio, so a history of the brand, basically. A little bit what they're about, uh, a tagline. So this is where, you know, we're didn't they make this video last year? I'm like night like I remember seeing this exact post of like the the brand thing with the the dots on the the chart and everything. Like they already did this. Collaborating with the narrative team to to come up with these uh the information for this and then that is the first the, the, the starting point that's all part of the uh, talked a little bit about guide. it okay i just remember seeing that a style guide is for everyone to really get to understand the company gotcha. and we you try to keep it simple but you put all the elements you need like the logos the colors you're allowed to use the typography that goes with that company even shapes every company i mean this is all important like guys how about uh, instead of the branding of the ships, I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate, I don't know, the same color being the same color on every armor that you use, right? Like, so for people who go for certain colors um, and are like trying to, to like mix and match armors, but have like the same color of that armor or something, right? Like little things like that. That's essentially what they're doing here, but with... Um, like the brands and the ships and stuff, they can go through that eventually as well, right? So that could be a part of what they do. So like if what I'm saying by this is, if you don't think this is important, um, there's many aspects of this that could tie into the rest of the game where it is. Uh, I just don't think it's an ISC, you know? Company has colors. If the primary color is blue, let's say you can't, importance. you can't go out and do like branding for that company. It's just when you get an ISC like last week and then you get one like this this week, it is like, okay, so we're not changing. Yeah, or make it like red, you know? So we're all trying to like tie everything together to make sure everybody's on the same page. What's interesting about Drake is it was one of the first brands that I had to interact with when I joined the company. First thing I did was research a little bit about the brand and noticed that there was a lot of multiple versions and interpretations of the brand. That was the first one that we had to make a hard call on, you know, what this brand is and how, how do we define it. So Drake, we wanted to bring it in a little bit closer to the essence of the brand. It's more, uh, not the black sheep, but the outcast, if you will, and the manufacturers. So okay. it's always tried to get in with the big boys at Fleet Week, but it's never managed, hence why they have their defense con. Um, a little bit on the side. Um, so we wanted to tie into that and wanted to have that, not that evil vibe to it, but that, you know, the outcast vibe, a little bit rebellious. Um, so the black and red was an obvious choice. What about the vulture as an outcast? And it's something that we had already in the game for Defense Con, and I thought that worked better than anything else that we had um, previously yeah. produced. Same thing, we're looking at uh, Crusader. We noticed that ships are using uh, red and gray branding on the ships for Crusader. Um, if you visit Horizon, there's a, a, a showroom that they have there that's completely all black and white. If you walk around the halls on Horizon, you notice there's uh, some branding for it's Crusader that is and blue white. and white. Yeah. So we had, again, m multiple interpretations of the same brand, and we wanted to unify that, bring it in a little bit more. So. We started looking at the brand itself, what was interesting, what felt right with its 
the essence that was, um, you the know, and put forward by best, narrative right, and, the, and, and the lore, and also, you know, through the community. I think and made the best we uh, came up with the, the version of Crusader that we but have I like now. Blue. So well. obviously, touching these brands, you know, ten years in uh, on a project, there's a lot of history on the game. You know, meet some resistance, and you know, you got to be careful and how far you go into updating the brands, even if it's for the better. It's always good to respect, you know, the work that's been done prior. But uh, all in all, a uh, very good experience uh, so far, and I think we're making some good progress on a lot of these. In addition to making all the branding for you, for the players, we uh, also make stuff for us. Working on tools as well, this one of the things that I noticed when I joined is we didn't have a proper uh, channel to communicate to everyone freely and openly and in a, in a way that would, you know, encourage the devs and everybody on the t different various teams to actually use these tools, these style guides and these resources that we are, we're creating for them. So, so we created a Dropbox. <laughs> we uh, came up with the idea of creating a brand catalog. So the brand catalog is for in-house, so it's, uh, it's the documents that will be used for all the teams where the whole of the information for all the manufacturer brands mostly will be found. And you will have downloadable links for all the assets. So everything will become super cohesive uh, for in-house. And also when everything comes out in game and in marketing. Uh, every Why is the head blurred out? Interesting. Everything will have the same, all the manufacturer brands will have the same look and feel so we uh, starting it off with the manufacturers obviously they are front and center but um it will grow grow into you know all the rest of the brands that we we see in the in the in, in the universe pyro now pyro was i think is one of my favorite mandates we've done so far for the branding team um, not only because uh, we're touching a specific aspect um, of branding that is not like, not often talked about. Exodus, thank you, man. Also because uh, we have the right team members to tackle this sort of mandate, and it was a lot of fun for it because the team was really excited about that. Graffiti is uh, another part of, uh, of my background, which uh, me and Max uh, worked uh, a lot on this aspect in, back in the days in our lives. So what? we had a lot of fun building uh, the graffiti structure, oh, graffiti. each graffiti style okay. were really existing graffiti style from all around the world and uh, we had to reproduce as much accurately possible the uh, tags, uh, throw-ups, uh, murals or they any aspect of the realness of graffiti, which that was a lot of fun. Basically, like we drew all the graffiti and we, we made their space look really uh, grimy and uh, the signage, you know, the relic signage. But can uh, we but lots of graffiti too. Lots of like faded, dirty layers and layers of stuff on the walls. So it was really amazing to see how uh, they, they took some visuals that existed that the environment team had created and they came in and went over this with the different graffiti. So they really developed like all the layers that you need for it to feel real. That was something that, uh, you know, is very rich and is extremely fun to bring forward with the visuals and branding. And at that point, it's, was it's more than name, branding. Right? It becomes like storytelling, basically, right? You're telling a story through anymore. all the elements that you're putting on the walls and in the environment that help sell the lore and, again, augment immersion and the experience for the player. Defining the factions that we found in like in Checkmate Station by the, the, the Rough and Ready was a lot of fun. Creating that, the identity of a faction, a gang, right? Um, in space, in, in, in a derelict, abandoned station in the middle of nowhere. I think you really get a vibe when you, when you get there, when you enter the, the zone. Like you, right away, you know it's it's rough and ready. They, they made the logo like a big sculpture, so I thought this was. Yeah, they right away you know it's rough and ready because you see this shit everywhere. But what we don't know is what that means, right? So here's the thing about branding, and all these guys doing this stuff from an art standpoint is it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if the game isn't supporting this right so all we know is what it 
what their branding looks like, but it doesn't mean anything about the rough and ready gang. And I think that's where like 323 comes in and reputation and some of these other things. Like think about that, the description of the reputation in 323, if it was applied to the pyro play test, then it starts to get more interesting, right? So all this stuff is cool, but if you don't have the buy-in from the the rest of the game to actually support this stuff, it doesn't mean anything. And that's basically what Pyro felt like, is I think a lot of the um, the criticism or feedback around the stations is they all look the same, when in reality, they had different gra graffiti, different branding, different because but none of it meant anything. The tags didn't mean anything to the player, so the player barely noticed them because every station appeared to be a complete copy of each other, right? And I, if I'm not mistaken, some of the stations weren't rough and ready. Some of them were other things. So, you know, we're making a video about how important branding is, but branding doesn't mean shit if there's no, yeah, if there's no story, if there's no... Um, engagement with the player and the branding of that what you're trying to sell. So you're doing what you're trying to sell before what you're trying to sell exists. And I think that that, that is the classic Star Citizen trope that has always been the mistake that they've done going forward is they've given the art teams the, the, the free reign to do whatever they want before the game determines the art style. The game should be determining this branding. The game should be determining what Rough and Ready is. And if you can't make Rough and Ready, you shouldn't be making the branding. It, that's just my... Well, maybe not you shouldn't be making the branding, but we certainly shouldn't be saying, when you go into this station, you know you're in Rough and Ready. That, no, I don't. It was pretty cool it from just, like where it started ours. to where it's at now. I think what the graffiti and the sculpture right? does it mostly. All this shit is cool, but it will mean so much more. Had the opportunity to work with the character team to define a little bit of the uh, tattoos that go in line with the direction that we had, you know, for the type of faction we wanted this, this gang to look like. I started the brainstorm around tattoos, which were all uh, bring a bit of like a uh, violence and of contrast on parts of the skins of the character design. So we had specific references. We had as targets and a special feel that we wanted to have with this gang because there's not only one gang, there's multiple and they all need to have, you know, each their own unique identity. There's a part of me who always wanted to be a tattoo artist, but I think this kind of work is, uh, is a work of art uh, by itself. So uh, the character artists really managed to bring a lot of the visual identity we started from. All the polishing was uh, really the character artist who managed a great job. It's just layering lore. Yeah, well, to me, I... but, but the, the game, you, you, gotta, you gotta start with the game first. It's, it's weird to me to not have the game first and then to have the lore um, second, right? Here, it's all, it's not even the lore first. It's the visuals and then the lore, and then the game maybe one day will get made, right? So that's always been my critique for it. It's always just been a very weird thing. And um, again, I think a, a very big critique was the stations all look the same, when in reality they didn't. And the reason they all look the same, I think, was because you weren't tying the branding to a, a unique experience that you would get with the different factions. I think the, the branding side just my is opinion. Uh, often looked over and i think we like we're building a team here to put an emphasis on the branding side every little things the little graffiti and you know the logos and the signage the navigational signage everything i think we're trying to push it a little further it's all about making one step closer to the real world which we're Man, surrounded like every day by a branding and either textures typography everything I think uh, we're the cherry on top of the sundae. I think it makes, I think that branding makes the whole game feel more real. Yes, yes. But the problem with the cherry is it's, it, there's no sundae, right? That's the only issue right now is there's no, there, she's 100% right. It is the cherry on top. 
but we started the Sunday with the cherry and the ice cream is still not, is being churned. You know what I mean? There's and I no think Sunday. this is where we can also develop like this em emotional connection to everything that you typical see. North American wants more food. Okay. See bro. in games okay. and uh, everything that Come the on. player uses, buys, and interacts with. The opportunity to do graphic design and advertisement, fake advertisement within a game, so rich and deep as Star Citizen is, I mean, I don't know a graphic designer that wouldn't want to like to contribute or participate or be part of a team like this. I mean, there's so much, so much variety. There's so much to do. The lore and the narrative is so rich. It's just a never ending stream of opportunity to create really cool stuff. I wish the gameplay teams felt the same way. So what did we learn this week? Well, hopefully we learned that branding is for more than just marketing uses. It's a tool and an artistry that can apply to many aspects of universe creation, including signage, personal identity, and maintaining a universe of internal consistency that doesn't break immersion. Now, don't forget that our Lunar New Year, Coramore, and the associated FreeFly events all start today. So you can mosey on over to the robertspaceindustries.com website for details. We'll check that next. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. All right. Uh, any, yeah, Jared and his shoes, it looks like. Picozilla. Okay. So the ends of ISCs are sometimes like that. But yeah, the, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, I'll go with what you said. Uh, it's the, it's the cherry on top, but uh, there's no Sunday. So it's kind of hard to appreciate the cherry uh, without the Sunday, right? So uh, I think that all that stuff is really cool and is really going to add to the game one day. But right now it's, it's uh, a little iffy for the, for the moment. A little iffy for the moment.